So last couple of months, I have been working on this project like this. So here's uh, two motors that it rotates like that and then this that's the where the axis where the propeller gets in and then by adjusting this angle of this axis you can balance in the middle of the air like this and hopefully this could be my next product and then that's the, another video like this And the total, the development time took about a couple of months for me. Then my question is, is really two months? In theory, it's not two months. It's actually a decade. And I'm counting that from the moment when I failed my linear algebra when I was in college. And then the, obviously the follow up question is what happened in between? Like how come this linear algebra failing student became a robotics engineer and then eventually become a entrepreneur providing the robotics products and services in the field so if you're interested in how to get into the robotics engineering field and let me talk about what worked and what didn't work when it comes to studying the robotics engineering as a beginner also if you're an entrepreneur like myself and they're getting into a robotics project let me tell you what are the minimally basic knowledges and practices you might need in the field because you might also encounter the mistakes i went through so let's talk about that in this video also as you might have guessed i have this robotics 101 course up and running so i know some of you have been waiting for this course and if you are unsure about this let me go over this together so let's get started so back in the days when I was undergrad like sophomore, especially after failing a linear algebra, I wanted to build this kind of V22 Osprey style VTOL vertical takeoff and landing. So I actually listed all these control professors and then visited them. And then I asked them how I could build one of these. And then eventually it would be really nice if we can transform into transform the movie into a humanoid robot and that would be really cool so that's my dream and i literally asked that and then they're all smiling at me and then they gave me a list of textbooks and even the research papers and then one of them i still remember literally laughed at me and there it was he said it was too ambitious for you let's that that hurt it so i was kind of mad and then I, I was trying to prove that he was wrong so i buried myself into task books and then research papers try to understand all that but i just realized that i'm not the protagonist in the movie like iron man tony stark i'm not that kind of person so i failed miserably i had to admit that it was maybe too ambitious for me and then my question for you is that really is it just me like that but I also tried something else. I actually tried to order a couple of robot kits, actually five or seven kits like this, because I heard that you just work on a bunch of hands-on projects like this, and then you will gain something. So I assembled them all, and then I was not satisfied. And that's because what I expected is to implement an algorithm so that they can move around and navigate by themselves, right? But I failed again. So just working on a bunch of projects, that's still a very good practice, but it wasn't really the best option either. So the time had passed like that. And then one day, actually, I happened to have a chance to talk to a guy. He, at the time, he was a PhD student. And then eventually in the future, he became my one of my advisors in my grad school. And then he told me that I need a feedback loop for whatever you want to do if it is a robotics project. And then I was like, oh yeah, I know the feedback loop from the control engineering course is one of our ass stuff, right? There's like a bunch of MATLAB and then Simulink code, but that doesn't even convert into Arduino code. So it's no use in practice. And then he actually showed me how you would implement all that in practice. And then that was my eye-opening moment. So do you have any guess what's the actual difference? It's nothing about the mathematical concept or coding and then the robot itself. Instead, it's actually these green arrows here, the connections between them. If you can connect all these in your brain, the math code and physical phenomena, like I'll just call it MCP. If you can actually connect it, and that's the beginning of your robotics journey. So what the heck am I talking about there, right? So let me just tell you a couple of my episodes that I actually encountered about this MCP. So when I was hired as a robotics engineer for a company, there were two embedded system engineers and one software engineer. Then they didn't have a lot of experience in the autonomous vehicle project. 
So thankfully, I was able to join the team, and then I explained the common filter that they needed at the time, and then I delivered the implementation of the common filter to them. So they were happy because it was working properly, and then they also thought they understood the common filter properly. So they were like iterating their design cycle and keep updating their system, like the PCB designs and the code optimization and all that. And then all of a sudden, it stopped working properly. And then I had to figure out why. And it took some days and nights, and long story short, it turned out to be the common filter implementation comes with the connection with the physical setup. For example, of course, this is not the same device that I'm talking about at the time, but just as an example. So if you have implemented and designed the PCB for say that direction originally, then the common filter implementation is like this. The H matrix can be identity matrix, which is a trivial case, but if you actually install your sensor in the PC like 90 degree rotated, then you need to actually multiply the rotation matrix in front of this H matrix, or H matrix can be the rotation matrix itself. Although I have explained the theory of the common filter to them, but they couldn't really connect all this physical setup when they designed the PCB for their robot. They happened to omit this fact, and obviously they didn't update the code. And the code itself is pretty simple. I mean, it's okay if you're like a team lead or employer, and that's why you exactly hired a robotics engineer, that's okay. But if you are the robotics engineer, you need to be able to connect all this mathematical concept, code, and physical phenomena, like even this kind of simple setup in your brain, all at the same time. That's because you are the robotics engineer, or maybe a science fusion engineer in this case, who need to be able to identify the problem and then address the problem and then fix the problem. And just before I said, it would be okay if you're the team lead, you don't have to know the common filter as a joke, but it's just a, literally a joke. I think it would be still great if you understand the common filter as a team lead or employer or startup owner, because if you knew the exact concept of the common filter like this, you didn't even have to waste the time for design cycle and then you have actually wasted the money because you designed the PCB in a wrong way. If you are the team lead in robotics project, you still want to know at least a certain basics like this so that you can make the proper decisions for your projects get going. Okay, I'd say you don't have to really enroll in this course, but if you have to just start with the robotics project, just keep this in your mind. Always think about the math concept and then how that would actually turn into a code and then how that connects to actual behavior of the robot. Then the next question is, okay, Sounds good, Elliot, then what, what should I study next? If you go down there, I have listed these four main concepts to get started with, like common filter, inertia sensors, rotation matrix, and state space method. Because state space matrix or state space method is actually the backbone of the modern control engineering. So you might want to know this, at least uh, uh, the basics. And then here are the prerequisites. My argument is that you don't have to really try to master all these one by one because that's going to take forever. And you don't even need all these concepts in each textbook like this. You only need a few concepts. And my argument is that don't be caught up by all these prerequisites. Just start with these concepts and then search for it and then ask ChatGPT how to actually implement this for your robot project. And then if you need a little more detailed information about each topics like matrix multiplication and Gaussian distribution like this, then again, just search it again. Just to be confident, and then never stop asking questions, and then just believe yourself that you can always achieve it all by yourself. And actually, that's how I did by myself. And that actually took some time, but it's doable. And that's why I prepared this course so that I can save your time. You don't have to waste time by looking up all these because I have all this step-by-step -step guide for you. And if some concepts are still not clear, you can just ask me a question in the discussion forum. Oh, and here's one more episode I want to share with you. That's another motivation I really wanted to make this course because there was an engineer, the back-end engineer, who were working in this uh, robotics project with me. We had this robot like this, believe it or not, that's the robot. And then there is a server, then there's another sensor, and then there is a front end as well, and then that's for the ground control station software. And then there's additional sensor that sends the position information of multiple robots like this. And then the backend server will send out the position information for each robot like that. And then the problem is that there is a PID controller going on 
in the robot and for, for the position control, there is optimally tuned PID gains for this controller. And then this backend server engineer changed this update rate for this position information. And then the PID controller stopped working properly because the tuned parameter for PID is optimal at a certain rate. I mean, if he actually understood how this PID was calculated, right? Then he could have asked at least about this plan if he can update this server information update rate. What I'm talking about is this. So inside the robot algorithm, there is an integrator. And then say that's the DT. Then that's the say velocity function, V and time. And then if the DT is large, your error gets large. And then if your DT, the time elapses between the iteration, so that's related to the rate of the information update. So if this DT is small, your calculation in the robot is really accurate compared to large DT. So whichever background you come from, I strongly encourage that you look up some common topics in robotics like this so that you can at least uh, communicate with other engineers if you're working on a robotics project. So I'm currently inside of my course and then there are topics I have listed here. So you will go through the PID and then states and rotation matrix, inertia sensors, noise filtering and so on. And then basic direction cosine matrix, matrix which is the basic sensor fusion algorithm. And then space and then state space method. And then there is no linear system. And I'll also strongly recommend that you this kind of carport system. What's the carport system? It's like this. So literally you are trying to balance the this pole on a moving arc like this. And nowadays I see a lot of bipedal robots, the humanoid robots are coming out. And then they are all based on this basic inverted pendulum problem like this, which is the same as cart pole. Also, if you know, of course you know, the SpaceX problem like this, I see the strong connection with the inverted pendulum as well. So I believe I have assorted the right topics to get started with the robotics engineering. Not too much, not too few. So I'd appreciate if you come to this website and then look up all these list of topics here. Oh, and uh, one last thing. So I know there are also people waiting for this computer vision, slam and deep learning courses like this. I do appreciate for the wait. However, I decided to go with the Robotics 101 first because the topics here in this course will be reused in these advanced topics like this. As an instructor talking about whatever from the beginning is kind of easy, but what's not really easy is to decide what not to talk at the beginning. And also that's why I decided to talk about this more like a scientific idea of the robotics engineering first, even before you implement actual code in the embedded system or RS2. Like I mentioned in another video, implementing code and then generating the PWM signals from Arduino, ESP, STM32 is kind of straightforward. However, the scientific idea that I talked about, those are the really the core idea that you need. So I really encourage that you go over this Robotics 101 first and then later on, I'll be also releasing the follow-up courses like this to the Lighter Slam, 3D Visual Graph Slam, Deep Learning, Computer Visions and Optimization and so on and so on. So to wrap up, connecting math, code and physical behavior of the robot is super important to begin with. And that's the only reason I developed this virtual robot system on the website. And then in the course, we'll exactly see how these connections are working together. So after all these failures with the trials and errors, I have put all these basic knowledge and the best practices into this course with a step-by-step -step guide. I believe this is a minimum level that you need if you're getting into robotics project or the robotics field. So I wish this can help your future plans, whether you plan to get a job in the field or getting into a grad program or even running a new startup in the field. All right, that's it for today. If you like this kind of content, please like it and subscribe to the channel. My name is Elliot and I'll see you around.